Okay, in this video we're going to go over how to make functions and why you should use functions in your scripting. Um, I'm going to do this in the first person character blueprint, so if you can open that up. So functions are a great way to have cleaner scripts and be able to use uh, code or scripting, um, such as taking health. For instance, we've got this health decrease that we uh, created. Uh, which every time it's called, uh, it takes uh, minus 10 off your health, and our health to start off with is at 100. But, for instance, what if you wanted to have um, this health in a function um, where it would see what damage was being taken and take that off your health instead of always being 10? So you could have like multiple enemy types or enemies with different weapons that take different types of uh, damage off you. Or you could like walk into ice, walk into fire, and they all react differently to your health. Well, we can do that using functions. So let's, uh, let's delete this and this event. And what we're going to do is we're going to come over here to the left hand side and we're going to create a new function. Okay, uh, we're going to call this here one health decrease and you can see already that it's opened up this function okay so it's we have a new tab up here now there's a few things that you cannot do in a function uh, and those are uh, the kind of like anything that they affect the flow of your event graph and with that I mean you can't have a delay in it so if I type in delay you can see that I can't have this delay or if I want a timeline I can't have a timeline. So basically a function is there to take inputs okay, from your event graph and then give you an output. So what I mean by that is in my character, if I for instance uh, had the F key, I'll type in keyboard, just go up to F. So if I press F key and I drag in my function, I can call this function health decrease. Um, the thing about this is it doesn't have any inputs or inputs or local variables or anything like that. So what we want to do is in the right hand side you can see we've got inputs and outputs. If I take an input, okay, and I'll just call this damage, and then I can have an output. I may not always have an output, okay, um, but I'll just take health that in there. So damage is going to be a float and health is also going to be a float. Okay, And then compile and save that. If I go to my event graph you can see now that my function takes in um, an input which is damage and it has a return node now called health. So if I was to type in keyboard again and let's say use my V key I can call on the same function, but what I can do is change the damage type or even the damage amount. So for F I can take off 10 and for V I can take off 50. So if I go back into my health decrease function, I can say damage, okay, is when we set our health, which is getting our health and minus in a float off it and that float is going to be damage. So you can see already that I'm not hard coding this in other than in my event graph where I'm typing these numbers in um, <coughs> but um, I'm using my damage uh, variable instead. So I've got the same function, same bit of code but when it's called upon with the F key, it's going to have a, a damage of 10. And when it's called by the V key, it's going to have a damage of 50. So next thing what we want to do is we just want to have a print string uh, that prints this out, showing us what our health is. So I'm just going to type in print. I'm going to copy and paste that, have two of them. And I'm going to plug these in. It does a small conversion. So 
if I press, oh, I've got a compiler. Oh, it's um, my light BP, remember, was calling on that um, custom event, uh, but I deleted that custom event, so it's just popping up an error. So I'm just going to delete that. Press play. So if I hit F, and I must not have set my health. Oh, I forgot to plug this in. So it was always going to return zero. So I'm just going to plug my health in there. Press play. So if I press F, it should take 10 off. So I've got 90 now. So if I press V, it should go down to 40. And you can see that's working. So we've got this one function that's carrying out multiple things now in our code. So we're just reusing that and we're just having to change something very small to do that. Another cool thing about a function is that you can set a timer where it's called upon in a loop, uh, which means that if you had a gun that was shooting or something like that there, you could have that functionality inside a function, and then you can call upon that multiple times when you've held, for instance, the F key down, and then you can pause it when you release. So I'm going to show you that quickly. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to make a projectile first of all, if we're going to have a weapon working. Um, uh, so I'm going to right click, uh, I'm going to create a new blueprint class, still an actor, and I'm just going to call this projectile, which is going to be our bullet, and I'm going to open that up. There's a few things that we want to have in this. Um, first of all, if we go to our prototype weapon and into, oh sorry, into our particles folder in there, I'm just going to drag and drop that into my component section up here, okay? And you can see that's going to make uh, the tracer appear uh, as a component. It will disappear slightly um, just because it's a particle effect. It'll play through it and then it'll make it disappear. But it is still there. Um, and then I'm also um, going to click on my components and type in projectile. And you can see there you've got projectile mov movement. And this is what's going to make the projectile move in our scene once we spawn it. Um, and you can see over here when I have this uh, component selected, I've got initial speed and max speed. I'm going to put these up to like maybe 20,000 each, which could be too high. I can't remember exact values that it should be using, but I may have to adjust them. I may have to make them higher or I may have to make them lower. Um, and another thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to type in um, box and I'm going to make a box collision as well. Okay, and I'm going to just slightly adjust this so it covers my projectile. That seems fine. Because what we want is when this collides with something, we want it to just basically uh, disappear. Um, so in our event graph for our projectile, it's going to be really, really simple. Event begin play, we're going to have a delay. Okay, uh, we're going to delay maybe by four seconds. And after that, we're going to type in destroy. And we're going to have destroy actor. Okay. So basically what's going to happen is uh, when we pre when this is spawned in the scene, okay, and we're going to be spawning loads of them and we don't want to take up uh, a lot of memory uh, for our game. Uh, after four seconds, it's going to destroy itself. Okay. So you can see the target itself. And that's what we want to happen. Um, we're going to leave the box collision for now. Uh, we just want to get this working to start off with. So compile and save that. Next part is we're going to go into our first person character. Uh, I'm just going to move all this stuff up here. And what we're going to do is uh, we're going to set a new input actually in our sentence. Okay, we're going to call that fire. So minimize all this. At the top of our main toolbar, we've got sentence. And we're going to go into project sentence. And in here, we've got inputs, uh, if I can find it. Yeah, down here, input. And at the minute, you can see we've got look up, look right, move forward, move right. So that's all our character sentence. That's mapping it to look up is mouse Y, 
look right is mouse X, move forward is WS. So they've tied these axis mappings to these uh, different inputs. And then we've got fire, okay? So that one's already in there for us, and that's the left mouse button, which is perfect. So I'm gonna open up my character. I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna type in fire. So whenever I hit this fire node, which is again my left mouse button, and it's pressed, it's gonna do so on. When it's released, it's gonna do so on. So when it's pressed, we wanna call upon a function. We have to call that function. We're just gonna call it rapid fire. Back out my event graph. Now the thing is, when I press this, it's only gonna call that function once, and that's not what we want. So what we're going to do is we're going to type in, we're going to right click, type in set timer. And you can see that we can set timer by function name. Okay. I remember my function name it has to be exactly the same spell. And so I'm just going to copy and paste it from here. And the function name. So rapid fire. And it's looping. So we're going to loop it, say every 0.3. Okay. And then when we release, we're going to pause that timer. So type in pause timer. Uh, pause timer by function name. Get our function name. Remember, it has to be exactly the way it's spelt in the function name. And just put it in there. For object, we don't need to worry about that. So when we're pressing this and we're holding it down, it's going to set our timer, okay? So and it's going to loop that every 0.3 of a second, okay? So it's going to constantly spawn our bullet and fire our bullet, um, and then when we release, it's going to pause that. So we better go into rapid fire and set this up. So what's going to happen when this is called? Well, basically, uh, if we pull out from this, we're going to spawn. So spawn actor from class. So if you just type in spawn class, you'll get that. We're going to have to select a class. We're going to type in projectile. And this spawn transform is where we need to say where it's going to spawn. Okay. So we could make it spawn anywhere in our level. But if we look at our viewport, I'm just going to select something here and press F to zoom in. We've got our gun. So we kind of want it to spawn, you know, at the muzzle area of our gun. So what I'm going to do is, uh, for our gun here, I'm going to add a new component. It's going to call it an arrow. The cool thing about using an arrow is it's a really good way to visualize where something's going to spawn and what direction it's going to spawn in. Okay, And that's important for a projectile because if I had it by default set to this way, every time we were shooting it, even if I had it in the right location, such as around there, it was going to spawn it and make it shoot that way. So I can turn this around. And this here will not be in the game. This arrow won't show in the game either. So it may take a bit of tweaking. But that seems okay to me to start off with. <clears throat> so now if I go back to my rapid fire, you can see I've got my arrow. I can grab that, get a reference to that, and I can type in git transform. And what I can do is get the word transform, and you can see that's just going to plug in there. So when I spawn this projectile, this class, I want it to spawn in this transform. And the cool thing about this transform is if I right click here and split destruct, this is a struct variable, which means it kind of contains three or basically more than one variable at a time. So if I split that struct, you can see it's got its location, the rotation, and the scale all in that transform. So recombine that and plug them in together. Compile, save. So let's go over that again. So we've got our input fire, which is our left mouse button. If I click and hold that, it's going to set off this timer by function. So it's going to call this function every 0.3 of a second until I release it, and then it's going to pause it. And in that function, all we're going to do is we've got no inputs or outputs. We don't really need them. 
uh, we're just going to spawn a projectile uh, at the arrow location. What I could do is I can change that arrow name to like muzzle, just so we know exactly what it is. So press play. You can see it's firing now when I'm holding it. The only problem is it might be moving too quick. So let's go into our projectile class, click on projectile movement, and we'll take the initial speed maybe down to 2000 instead of 20,000. Press play now. You can see it's shooting. That's another thing the projectile uh, in the projectile movement will have gravity enabled. So you can see that it's set to 1. If you set that to 0, you won't get that gravity fall off. A few other tweaks that probably needed. You can see that the it's spawning basically um, way past or inside the gun. So if I go into my player or first person character blueprint and in the viewport, I'm just going to take that arrow and move it forward a good bit. Somewhere like that. And if I press play now, hold down you can see it spawning out there so that's how you use a function um, as a timer to make um, like rapid fire again like you can come into that as well into the vent graph and change the time of that to like maybe point 0.1 and in the function rapid fire as well like if you had ammo every time this was called or in a loop you could take your ammo down by one as well so that could be all contained inside here and it's clutter free as well so my event graph you know for that whole fire function if it gets really complicated in my event graph it's just going to look like that so it's another really good reason to use functions